Uh, my name is Aisha Manai. I come from an organization called Startup Refugees. Uh, we are an NGO founded in 2015. And I what, what really stuck with me from Asim's presentation was looking at things from a different angle. And I would say that Startup Refugees was founded on this very principle. So when we had around 30,000 people come in from Iraq, from Syria, from Afghanistan, the discussion that was happening in Finnish media was quite absurd. We were discussing about why do these people have gel in their hair? Why are they wearing jeans? Why do they have portable phones? Is this normal? This is fishy. That was sort of the attitude that was going on, especially if you look at it from the media side and social media uh, comment sections. But what startup refugees wanted to do was let's instead of thinking about the genes and the gel and the whatnot that has nothing to do with this, let's think about what do these people have to offer? Uh, what sort of educational backgrounds do these people have? And how could they put their potential to use instead of sitting at, in reception all day and just staring at walls? And the idea from the very beginning was let's do this together with the people that we want to do it for. So let's not us uh, Finns who have not no idea about what it means to be a refugee or an asylum seeker. Let's not us be the ones that start this. Let's actually go to the reception centers and try and find people from there and work together and start building up uh, this organization. And today, around seven years later, we have a network of over 2000 individuals, uh, companies, congregations, municipalities and cities that are helping us uh, do the work that we do. Now, what is the work that we do? So what we do is three things. Number one is we try and help uh, refugees, asylum seekers, and other migrants to find employment in the open job market. So meaning uh, none of uh, these unpaid internships or like this uh, supported employment, but actually go and work in, in the private sector, preferably. Uh, second is help people start up their own companies in Finland. And third is, in one way or another, boost their own skills through mentoring, uh, offering train, train, training in, for example, IT sector, coding, et cetera. And the way that we do this is, like I mentioned before, we have a really wide network of companies. And one of these companies that I will give a shout out to is Futurise. Uh, Futurise probably invested, I would say, probably like 700,000 euros worth in their voluntary work to us. But they helped us build this digital platform called Match Made in Startup Refugees. And Match is basically an information bank, a platform where we have the information of today around 9,000 uh, asylum seekers, refugees and other migrants. It's basically a skills portfolio of these people. So what they've studied, what their educational background is, what they're interested to do in the future. And this is what helps us. So when a company contacts us or we contact a company, and they say, hey, we're looking for four coders who know how to do Java, or we're looking for someone to come and work in a laundromat. We go into our match database and we check the profiles. And after that, we match the employer and the job seeker. And before the job seeker actually goes and works in that company, they go through a training program called Working Life and Fit, which we can do in multiple languages because we are 22 people that speak 17 different languages. We are a very diverse uh, staff, and many of our staff members have actually come to Finland in 2015 or even after that. Uh, so we can offer this working life in Finland training in many languages, and the idea is that the training sort of takes away some of the pressure from the onboarding of the employer. So we talk about what are your rights and responsibilities as an employee in Finland, how does our taxation system work, uh, how do how do salary structures work? Uh, labor unions, all of all of the above, on through uh, through this working life in Finland database. And what I really want to reiterate once again, looking at uh, looking at an issue from a different perspective, that when we talk about humanitarian uh, migration to Finland or any country, I feel that we have been in Finland looking at it from a perspective that oh yes, let's help these people, which of course I understand. But we never think about the fact that what would these people want themselves? What are they interested in? If you come to a new country, your sole goal probably isn't to just sit still. And what we have noticed is that 100% of these people want to work. Now, how do we reach these people is usually a question that we get. So how do we get the information of these 9,000? We actually go to reception centers. Kirkonummi, Helsinki, uh, Rovaniemi, we go directly to the reception centers 
and we talk with the asylum seekers there. Can we collect your profile? Are you interested to work if you get the opportunity? And now that we've become sort of a bigger organization, in addition to going to the reception centers, we also organize these uh, match clinics in, for example, Audi in Helsinki, in Itakeskus Library, all over the country. Well, not all over the country because we're currently only located in uh, Helsinki, Rovaniemi, and Oulu. This is old information. It was actually 9,000 uh, of the profiles that we have there. Now, what type of background do these people have? This shows you the top eight fields of expertise. So mostly these people are experts from the service sector, construction, logistics, education, information technology. We also have a lot of healthcare professionals, but of course that is a trickier target group to get into fast employment track because their Finnish or Swedish language really is needed. And I'd like to also state that we do not actually provide any language training. So our idea is that get people find get them to find employment opportunities as fast as possible so they really get a sense of belonging they actually feel that they're contributing to society and the language learning will come either at the workplace or there are also plenty of other entities that support in language uh, in language training and that's definitely not our uh, area of expertise We've also organized these match clinics at a supercell and I'd like to apologize I have many many pictures. But the reason that I have these pictures is because I want you to see, like, what is it that we do? That it's easy for me to just come and tell, hey, we do these great things, but I want you to also see it uh, through pictures. But shortly, how, for example, our employment service works. We get in touch with the, with the person that we want to support to find employment. We map out their skills. Uh, we start checking out scouting companies that, can, um, that would be interested in that said person who has this skill. Then we pre-interview these people, we match them, we help with the onboarding, and we always do regular checkups. Even though we want to trust the companies that are in our network that everything will go smoothly, but this is not always the case. Unfortunately, throughout the years, we have had a few uh, cases where the employer has not had maybe the best of intentions, and this is why we really follow up with the people who get employed through us. We ask, how's it going? And sometimes it can be on either side, there can be issues, but we try to be there to sort of uh, either solve the situation or then cut contact entirely. Uh, in addition to going to the reception centers, we also organize a lot of recruitment events in different places, like I mentioned, Audi and, uh, and Itakeskuksen Library, for example, and also smaller recruitment events at our offices in Kulturitalo, Böle. And uh, what also, in addition, I said we have 22 people and 17 different languages, but in addition to this, we have this community, uh, community leader network. It's around 20 people. Uh, we have hourly contracts with them, so they're not doing voluntary work. But the idea is that, for example, if we have, uh, lately there have been many Ukrainians who have been employed through us, and we've noticed, of course, this is not always the case, but with many Ukrainians, they don't speak Finnish, Swedish, nor English, so they really need uh, support at the workplace. So what we've done is we have this community leader network, and we have people who have come from Ukraine many years ago, and they speak Ukrainian, and they speak Finnish, so they can actually go to the workplace for a few weeks, and then we pay them on an hourly basis that they sort of give that extra help uh, to the employer. Now I want to show, this is a model that we're currently working on, so this is not ready yet, but just to show you the impact of what we do. Like I said, we are an NGO, 70% of our funding comes from, for example, the European Social Fund from STEA, this uh, is, it, I think it's Social Ministry in Finland, and then we got, get private donations, and then we also have foundations uh, that give us, for example, Tina ja Antti Herlinen Säätiö, Yksityisyrittäjän Säätiö, they also support our work. So this is why we're able to give this service, you know, free of charge to companies. And we've started to think about how could we portray the actual economical impact of this work? Because yes, we are mainly uh, funded by public money, but we can prove that uh, our employment services, the budget for that is around 700,000 per year. And we employ currently around 350 per year. And if we calculate that even 60% of these people would stay in the job a year later, we can still see a very clear economic benefit, a benefit to society. And even though I've, I have mixed feelings about, you know, talking about people as numbers, but at the same time, I realize the society that we live in and the way that our decision makers, for example, think. 
And we have to also think about the, the actual economic impact. And I am very, I can say with a, you know, a clear conscience that we know that the work that we do actually has a very clear, not just a social impact, but also an economic impact uh, on society. So in addition to helping people find employment opportunities, we also help with skill development. Throughout the years, we've offered around 12,000 different opportunities to improve skills. Here are just a few examples. We have field-specific coaching. This was, I think, a trukkikuski, like not a truck driver, but those people who drive these cars in storages. Uh, training, photography training, forklift training. Then here's pictures from our working life in Finland training. We've done scrum master training, which is this uh, method of, of working, especially in the IT sector. Then currently we have a mentoring bro program going on with Tieto Evri uh, and Telia. Then we have the business program, which helps people start their own companies. Around 900 uh, people have participated in our business program. So we offer personal coaching on how to start a business in Finland, but then also actually market validation. So we really try to be there with you from the beginning, from the business planning phase until the actual launching of the business phase. And out of the 900 people who have gone through our program, we know that at least 90 companies uh, have been registered. Maybe one example here in Helsinki is, for example, Kara's restaurant that has magnificent Syrian food. Go check it out. That's one of the companies that was started by our support. And they are actually now, I think, opening a second or third restaurant. So they're doing very well. Yeah. And so this is graduates from our entrepreneurship course. Of course, in addition to the course, we also have mentoring because we've been doing this for a relatively long period. So the really good thing also about the social impact that a person who started a company with our support in 2018 might now actually be an employer who has several employees and they contact us and say, hey, I really appreciate the support that I got from you like five years ago. Can I do something? And then we say, yeah, actually, you can do something. Please come and mentor our new uh, people who are interested in starting their own businesses in Finland. These are a few pictures from the pop-ups and fairs and festivals. We uh, go to these different places. We can, for example, agree with a shopping center that could we come there on Saturday and Sunday and have a few of our um, entrepreneurs from the creative arts come and sort of do a small market validation and test how to, how to sell to people face-to-face uh, -face and is there any interest in their products. We were at the Christmas market last year. We've been at Slush uh, for many years. Also Flow Festival, which is, I think, one of the biggest festivals in, in Europe, or at least in Finland. So we've, we're very happy that Flow has, has always had interest uh, in working together with us. Uh, what we want in the future is we would like to take this sort of, this is nothing like, you know, rocket science. I mean, we're just helping people find jobs and start businesses. But we still think that this is a very, like, simple uh, system that works and we want to take it abroad but we've unfortunately only had one uh, opportunity we did in the Zatar camp in Jordan in 2021 this small pilot for 45 people that they had to share computers and it was an IT pilot and out of those 45 people seven at least that we know of have uh, started to work as freelancers have some of them have gotten out of the camp but some of them are actually working uh, in in the camp and offering these uh, IT services and we also started this Startup Refugees Fund two years ago. It's the only fund that I know of, at least, that only uh, gives out um, fund funding to refugee-owned uh, companies. It's a very small fund. We have like 9,000 euros, but still, we give a few thousand euros per entrepreneur a year sort of to help them kick off, kick off their business. But very shortly, this is basically what we are all about. And if I still have time to maybe just say a few things that we've learned throughout the way, uh, this has been going on for now seven years plus. There's been many mistakes that have happened. For example, in the beginning, I don't actually know what Oslo Skunta is in English, but this sort of form of enterprise, the idea was that we own a, a what? A cooperation. A cooperative cooperation, which is a business model. And the idea was that all of the people somehow worked for that, but that was a bureaucratic nightmare and did not work. And we had to actually close it down. Uh, we've also learned that not all employers have the best interests and we have to be really careful about how we actually make sure that the companies that we start working with, you know, are, are up for it. Uh, that it's very hard work to actually find the companies who are interested because, yes, we have a wide network. But what we noticed in the past few years is that everyone just wants to hire Ukrainians. 
because it's somehow, I guess, the cool thing to do. And I mean, I think, of course, that's wonderful. But if we think about our 9,000 people, you know, 2,000 of them are Ukrainians. The rest come from all over the world. And it feels quite uh, sad that a company contacts us and says, hey, we just want Ukrainian welders or construction workers. But of course, we never agreed to that. But that's also been interesting to find out that there are these very strong biases uh, from the employment sector. But yes, I will stop now. Thank you so much. It was very nice. It was very nice.